In this video, we are going to prove the so-called Liouville's theorem. It is a theorem that we have already used in some previous videos where I showed the considerations that Einstein made on thermodynamics in one of his famous articles in 1902. In that article, Einstein made use of the so-called Liouville's theorem. And in this case, we are going to prove the theorem. We will show in particular that if we integrate the phase space variables, so the positions and the momenta, meaning that we integrate the variables dq1 prime, dot, 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 dqs prime, which are the positions, and we have s positions because the degrees of freedom are s, then we integrate over the momenta, p1 prime, dot, 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 dps prime. This is equal to the integral over other set of coordinates and momenta. So it's as if we change variables. We go from the system made up of these variables, q1 prime, qs prime, p1 prime, ps prime, to a system where we have the variables q1, dot, 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 qs, p1, ps. So this means that the Jacobian of the transformation that I can call d is equal to one. We have to prove that. This Jacobian can be written like this. It is partial of q1 prime dot 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 qs prime p1 prime dot 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 ps prime with respect to q1 dot 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 qs p1 dot 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 ps. We have to show that this Jacobian is equal to one because when we consider multivariable calculus and we go from one multiple integral to another multiple integral, there appears a Jacobian. And in this case, the Jacobian should be one. We are going to use the following properties of Jacobians, which are quite easy to show. So we can rewrite the Jacobian above like this. It's d q1 prime dot 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 qs prime p1 prime dot 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 ps prime. And here we take this Jacobian with respect to these variables, q1 dot 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 qs. And here we consider the variables p1 prime dot 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 ps prime. So this is not a mistake. I'm not considering the same variables here because in here I multiply by this. I have q1 dot 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 qs, p1 prime dot 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 ps prime, and then I divide by d q1 dot 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 qs, p1 dot 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 ps. So it's like a chain rule. And it's as if we are making two different coordinate transformations. First, we are going from this set of variables here, q1, qs, p1, ps, to this set of variables q1, qs, p1 prime, ps prime, and then we are doing another transformation to q1 prime, qs prime, p1 prime, ps prime. It is quite intuitive. And then we can also rewrite this slightly differently. So this determinant here can also be rewritten as the inverse of this determinant, dq1 dot 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 qs, p1 dot 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 ps with respect to q1 dot 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 qs p1 prime dot 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 ps prime and then we take the inverse of this and so this determinant is equal to this inverse and therefore d can also be written as a ratio between this determinant and this determinant. So this is what we are going to consider. So let me rewrite it. We have dq1 prime dot 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 qs prime p1 prime dot 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 ps prime with respect to dq1 dot 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 qs p1 prime dot 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 ps prime, and then we divide by 
D Q1 dot 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 QS P1 dot 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 yes divided by D Q1 dot 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 QS P1 prime dot 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 PS prime and now we can also make another consideration. We invoke the rule that if the same variables appear in both the numerator and the denominator, they can be cancelled. So we can rewrite this ratio between determinants like this. We have d q1 prime dot 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 qs prime with respect to q1 dot 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 qs and it's as if we consider the variables pj prime constants and then we divide by d p1 p2 dot 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 ps and then here we have p1 prime p2 prime dot 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 ps prime and here it's as if we consider the variables qj q1 q2 dot 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 qs they are just some constants up to this point the equations are valid for any non-singular transformations but we have to prove that the numerator and the denominator are equal in this expression when these transformations are quote unquote canonical so we cannot prove in general that this is equal to one but we have to prove that this is equal to one only for those particular transformations that preserve the equations of motion so the hamilton equations for example they are equations which describe the dynamics of a system and the variational principle for example it should remain the same also in the new set of coordinates so we have to choose those coordinates transformations that preserve the hamilton equations and also the variational principle and i will talk about this in detail in the next video but in here I will assume that this is something given. So we have to consider canonical transformations and for canonical transformations, it is possible to consider a so-called generating function. I will also introduce this concept in the next video. So if you don't know much about this, just wait for it and the explanation will come in the next video. The generating function is very important because it is a function that will help us derive from just one scalar function the Hamilton equations, so the equations of motion, the dynamics of the system. The function that we consider is phi of the variables q and the variables p prime. It is a function of q, p prime, and t. And we consider the differential of this function. It is possible to show that there is a function that has the following differential. As I said, I will show it next time, but it can be written as a sum between pi dqi plus the sum qi prime d pi prime and then we have plus we have the hamiltonian h prime associated to the system of variables qi prime pi prime minus the hamiltonian of the system associated to the variables pi qi multiplied by dt and from this we infer that pi is equal to partial phi with respect to qi and we infer that qi prime is equal to partial phi over pi prime and that h prime is equal to h plus d phi over dt now in the expression for the jacobian which is this one we have something like this we have d q prime i with respect to q j so it is some kind of matrix like this and we have to consider the determinant of this but d q prime i d q j can be written from this one like this d squared phi dqj dp prime i and we can also do something similar for this expression here 
this determinant can be written in this form. It's dPi with respect to dP prime j, and then this is the matrix, and we have to consider the determinant of this matrix. But what is this matrix? Well, from this equation, we find that this is d squared phi with respect to qi dp prime j. And now, when we consider determinants, these two determinants, the determinants of these two matrices are exactly the same, because this matrix is equal to the transpose of this matrix, but the determinant of the transpose is equal to the determinant of the matrix itself. So it means that these two determinants here are equal, this one and this one, therefore their ratio will give me one. And this is how we prove that Liouville's theorem holds. In the next video, I will discuss more thoroughly how this generating function arises. This is quite important, but I will do it in the next video.